Dude, this is the craziest story, man. Like, so th this shows you why you never give up. Um, so I was undefeated. I had a lot of experience in the smaller shows with Lynn and Eve and all these guys. So we were good coming out of Texas, all three of us, you know what I mean? Like me and Eve and stuff. And then I got, you know, I turned pro. I won my pro fights. I was like five and zero. Oh, and then I fought for the championship at WEC. So I fought Chris Lieben for the championship uh, and we fought for the title. And Dana White was at that show. He was sitting front row and he was scouting me and he was scouting Mike Kyle to possibly come in the UFC after that show. And I was fighting for the oh, title. Wow. So I lost that fight right in front of Dana, like literally like, you know, it was a TKO and I lost right in front of Dana. Um, and then right after that, we found out that they were casting for the ultimate fighter to be in the UFC. Dana wanted you to send, you know, videotapes in. He talked to Bob Cook and, and Javier at the wow. team. And so he said, hey, guys, you know, all of you, AK, send your tapes in and apply. I didn't do it, man, because I'm thinking, like, Dana just saw me lose. Like, I'm the last person in the world that he wants to be in the UFC right now, you know? Um, and then after I didn't send something in, Bob Cook was like, Swick, dude, why would you not send your tape in and, like, try to apply for this? Like, you know, you get dude, on the show. Crazy, it's a reality Bob. show. And then you get in the UFC. Like, that's your goal. And, like, I'm like, you think he'll really take me and everything? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, man, I'll do it if I can. I just didn't think I would like qualify or whatever. And so I found out that I did, sent my tape in. It was late. Um, they flew me in and then they basically said they already had all the middleweights casted, but they wanted me for the show. I had a good like whatever interview and try out, whatever you want to call it. And they said, but we can put you at light heavyweight. So would you fight light heavyweight? And I'm like, man, I'll fight heavyweight. I don't give a shit. Like to be on the show, like I, I'll do whatever it takes, you know? I um, fuck. I'm and, trying to get paid and try to punch people in the face. Dude, so then they got <laughs> me on the show. So I made the show and then we, and then we went through the show and we're doing all these like obstacles and I wanted to fight so bad. So I was always talking to Dana, like, let's just fight, man. Let's, why are we doing these obstacles and all these like, these, these like competitions and, and we're, it's like real world. We're supposed to be ultimate fighters. Like, you know what I mean? Like we were all getting kind of been out of shape because we were all fighters, man. Everybody in the first season was like real fighters. We weren't like, you know, these, these O and O guys, uh, two and O, you know, you know, five fights. And we were all fighters. And, uh, and finally we saw, we walked into the training camp one, or training uh, facility one day and we saw these stools out front and it was like a red and a blue one that was painted. And when we saw those stools painted, we knew that was corner shares. So we knew shit was about to get real then. And then they announced we were going to fight. And I made it to the semifinals. And then I lost again on the Ultimate Fighter. So I lost uh, the fight to get on the show. And they still brought me on the show. Then I lost in the semifinals against Stefan Bonner. It was between me and Stefan to fight Forrest in the finals. And I lost to him. Mm. I lost to him. So, so now I've lost twice in front of Dana in a row. Um, so now it's like, this is that whole thing of like, don't quitting, right? And don't give up and, and don't doubt yourself. So then, uh, you know, I, we already knew we had one more shot in the UFC in the finale. So no matter what, win or lose, we at least get that one shot in the UFC. So in the finale, we fought again. And then I went on a five-fight win streak, became the number one contender and was going to fight Anderson, except Travis Luter jumped in. So that just goes to show you, man, like, you know, I, I, I yeah. lost a fight, luckily got on the Ultimate Fighter, lost on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, had my one UFC fight, won that fight, which kept me in the UFC. I would have been cut. Won my second fight, which kept me in the UFC. Won three more fights and then became the number one contender, beating David Loazzo after he fought Rich Franklin for the title. Yeah. And then and I was next David in line. David Loazzo was that guy, too. So it was like crazy, that's right? Like, David Loazzo was in that guy. I started, that's when I started watching this. He was the man, time. dude. I watched a little bit. Of, yeah, he was the man right there. He was the man, dude. Mm -hmm. He beat Evan Tanner. He, he beat <laughs> Evan Tanner, who was the former champ. And then, and then he got the fight with Rich Franklin to fight for the championship. They went to a decision. Yep. And then I ended up fighting David Loazzo next and beat him. And that made me the number yep. one contender. And then Luter jumped ahead because Luter was on a later season of Ultimate Fighter where if you win the show, you get a, a title shot. So he got to jump ahead and fight uh, Anderson, which we didn't know Anderson was Anderson at that time. You know, he knocked out Chris yeah. Lieben. He knocked out Rich Franklin. But we didn't know, like, you know, it was going to be the Anderson that we saw after that, you know. Yeah. And so I was excited to fight him and, and get in there and mix it up with somebody who was going to strike with me. And then I took a fight with Yushin Okami because it was in my hometown. I didn't want to wait on Luter. And then I dropped a decision yeah. to Okami. And then I ended up dropping a welterweight, went through another win streak, four or five fights or whatever, and then fought Dan Hardy for another title contention fight to fight GSP. So it's like it's crazy like how you can, you know, you yeah. just because you lose a couple fights or, or you're down on your luck and you feel like your whole career is over, which is how I felt, especially after losing on the Ultimate Fighter, I went on my biggest streaks after that and made it literally to the top three in two different divisions yeah. off of those losses, off of those huge losses. So it's kind of inspiring, I think, or should be inspiring to people, you know, not to give up and not to let those losses get to you. You know, you're going to have them. And it's just how you pick yourself back up yeah. and, and how you go forward, man. I think we've all been there. And so that's yeah. it, man. And that, that's my, my ultimate fighter story. And, and it, it made my career. Real quick, real quick, real quick with Mike Swift.
quick, real quick.